Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. In a recent video, I talked about how I was going to take the Horizon tank, the uh, Higer Horizon, and simply just uh, break it down and get rid of it. Underneath the comments, one of you made a suggestion. You know I read your comments, and you know always be learning is the uh, theme of the channel. I took your suggestion to heart, and um, you can see the suggestion here. And I thank you for that, uh, my friend. I appreciate you, you uh, making that recommendation. I went ahead and followed that suggestion, and I think I, I, think I may have actually uh, come up with a way to salvage the, uh, the, Horizon, the Horizon tank and be able to continue to use it as a planted aquarium and maybe even throw a few little fish in there. Let me show you what I did. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Well, if you follow my channel, you know the adventure I've been on with this tank. I decided that it was not safe for nano fish because they would get trapped between the back wall and the filter that comes with this. And I, uh, I received this tank from Higer. It's called a Higer Horizon 8 gallon. And uh, it was originally designed or intended to be the home for the betta fish. Based on your suggestion, I'm gonna use this uh, aquarium co-op sponge. It's one of the smaller sponges, if not the smallest that they sell. It's weighed down at the bottom and uh, very simple, very easy to work with. And the first step to get this going was to remove the uh, filter that came with the tank. I had wrapped the filter in pinky floss because I didn't want fish to be able to get up in there and get trapped between the, uh, the wall or the background and that filter. It's not an enormous and highly powerful filter, but it seems to create a lot of, a lot of suction from these grills. You can see the cutouts there at the top. They're on both sides. And when up against the uh, wall or the uh, 3D background, in that slot it fits in, it just creates a bit of a nano fish death zone. You can see that it was working pretty well. Look at that pinky floss. Pretty dirty. So I go ahead and pull that out and went ahead and set up the sponge. Very easy to set up. First thing you do of course is you run a little hot water over your airline so it becomes a bit soft and easier to push over the nipple of the uh, of the sponge filter making sure that you have the uh, that lift tube make sure the tube is on the airline before you connect it. it takes about 30 seconds and you're good to go and as you can see it fits perfectly in the uh, slot that was cut out by the factory for that factory installed filter. I happen to have one of these uh, cobalt rescue air pumps on hand. This is the kind of um, pump that kicks in in the event of a power outage. Of course you can run it 24-7 and just have it set up to kick in. If power goes out it'll run for 48 hours. I did a test and as you can see that thing is bubbling like a like a cauldron. But I didn't like that, that the bubbles were isolated in that corner. So I wanted to go ahead and uh, get them to sort of spread out over the surface of the tank. Of course, that's how you oxygenate by breaking up surface tension, allowing bad gas out and uh, oxygen in. So I went ahead and uh, treated the tank for a couple of reasons. One, I removed a lot of beneficial bacteria with that filter and that pinky floss. But also I wanted to go ahead and top off the tank so that the so that the bu bubbles would spread out over the surface of the tank. So I took about four or five cups of water and I got the water level high enough so that the bubbles could now start to work their way out over the tank. I 
pretty much did it and as you can see it's working perfectly the cobalt uh, filter just clips onto the side of the tank and it has a uh, USB connector very very quiet you can't even hear it running So now I believe it's impossible for a fish to get trapped back there or a snail or a shrimp or a betta or anything I might want to put in there. It's going to be safe for fish to be in this tank. The worst that'll happen is they'll uh, go back there and explore around a little bit around that sponge and then go ahead and swim back out. So this, uh, this problem is resolved. I thank you boss as he calls himself on YouTube, for your, um, for your suggestion. I believe it is going to work. And as you can see, the plants are doing great. They're doing a thing called purling, which is uh, when they release little air bubbles. I am using some of that Aquarium Co-op Easy Green. I do believe it is helping. And so now I just need to, to decide what to do with this tank. What do you think I should do with it? So there you have it. It's a simple, elegant solution. It will produce uh, oxygenation, it will produce filtration, and it is impossible for it to really trap any fish, require any kind of special jerry-rigging jerry or tweaking to make it safe for fish. Thank you for that suggestion. I do listen to you folks. What you say is important. I do learn as much from you as you learn from me, I assure you. So thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and we'll talk about this and a whole lot of other stuff at the Saturday Cichlids and Coffee live stream. That's at 11 a.m. Central. That's 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to, uh, to hit that sub button, the bell, and the thumbs up, and let YouTube know that something good is going on at the channel. That way they'll suggest the channel to other fish keepers like you and me. Okay, thank you my friends, and uh, that's it for me. Bye-bye.